All right, in this video, I am going to outline something that I actually have not outlined in a very, very, very long time. A detailed version and explanation of my strategy in 2023. Believe it or not, I actually would do a strategy video once or maybe twice a year, once earlier in the year and then one later in the year, right? My 2020 strategy, 2021, 2022. But I never did 2023 because I started getting some comments of people saying, yeah, well, this is all, you know, hearsay and in theory. And technically they were right. It was all theory. It's basically me just analyzing and showing my, my strategy on the charts, but they wanted to see it in live action. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to show you guys. So I went on a rampage this entire year, even early last year on this is how I made this much money. This is how I made this much money trading. And this is how I did this. And over and over and over and over and over again on my YouTube channel, which is why a lot of times you won't see, here is my strategy. You'll see, here's how I made this much money in this much time. And now I feel like I've done enough and shown enough to give you guys the full strategy on how I actually execute these trades um, in my own personal life. So without further ado, we are going to get right into this video. Um, so you guys will see my charts right here. Uh, it is actually completely covered with all my stuff. This is how my charts actually look in real time. Um, it's clean to me. It may be confusing to some, but I'm going to break it down uh, in uh, this video. Uh, for those who don't know who I am, my name is Swaggy C. I've been trading for nine years and teaching for four. I've taught over 25,000 students, created some six-figure students and even some seven-figure students. And uh, we're still rolling. We're still creating this empire to change as many lives as possible and make financial education and trading accessible to those interested and don't who don't have any other options who, who may resort to drugs and, and other options you know like you can sit at home and learn how to trade and become a trader right um, but if you do know who i am you've seen these type of videos before like i said 2020 2021 and 2022 and if you're familiar with me understand that my strategy on a foundational level is the same but from a technical level in the inside, it's a little bit different. But I'm going to explain the entire process in here. And if you know who I am, but it still aren't profitable yet, still watch the video um, because there may be something in here that you don't know at all. Right. So you look at my chart and I'm going to go on gold because gold was the last pair I made money on. If you haven't seen my previous video, this is, you know, the pair where I made 25,000, 26,000 on this pair alone, not including the 7.8K I made on GBP USD. Gold is my favorite pair. Always has been. Um, so looking at gold, I still have my psychological levels on there. If you don't know what psychological levels are, they're just key areas at key points, right? Key numbers on the charts where price usually hesitates at a lot of times. And for me, I like to look at these as round numbers. You can even actually, you know, type right now psychological levels, Forex on Google, and it'll tell you the exact same thing, right? So for gold, gold's a little bit different, right? If so, prime example, if I'm on GBP USD, like the psych levels, and GBP is still crashing, damn. All right, so. Uh, I'm in the middle of a strategy video. I'm not going to stop it either. Should I stop this video and get in this trade right now? Uh, GU is tanking. So I knew GU was going to drop, but I actually got out when it was retracing. Um, my TP1 was here and TP2 was here. I was cool with just a TP1 because I usually take, and this is part of the strategy video, I guess, I usually take maybe 60 to 70% of my trade off if it hits TP1. Um, so that's point number one, right? But I was going to have it running TP2, but the issue was it was consolidating and it, and it pulled up and you know, FOMC wasn't too good. So it was like, all right, I'm going to get out. But it's clearly dropping and I usually trade around this time, right? So um, I use this as an example of a trade I'm not going to get into. And it just frustrates me a lot because I, I could really stop this video and get in a trade right now. And, and But the issue is since I have this lab open, right, it's where I trade live, I usually will get on a Zoom with everybody and get at, and like enter the trade live. I don't just... Because people may say, oh, why don't you stop the video and get in and then go back? No, because I, I, I'm very transparent. So I will do a whole session with my, my group. But I'm in the middle of a video right now. Uh, I'll pass this up right now. But that's point number one. Point number two, for the most part, is I am a London-ish, you know, New York overlap trader. But I will never, ever, ever enter during those times, right? And I'll get into the psychological levels in a second, like deeper into it. So for prime example, I usually enter my trades between 6.30 right p.m and around 9 30 p.m for the most part like 99 percent of my trades are usually entered during that time why because there's usually low volume in the markets right there's not enough liquidity markets are kind of consolidating it's not doing too much but i'm comfortable placing my trade during that time so when i place it market will move a little bit i'm always comfortable with a little bit of drawdown and then once it gets to london session <clears throat> for the most part it's either i already forgot about the trade 
or I'm already laying down with my wife, you know, right? Like I'm chilling, I'm reading a book, whatever the case may be. So my mind is not really focused on that trade. So I like to place these trades early on when there's low volume because it helps my discipline, right? So consciously it helps with it where I'm not even really focused on the trade. I woke up this morning, prime example, this gold trade, I didn't even know it was in profit, right? Like I, I knew it was gonna get to 1950. I called it out in, you know, my lab. I said, I can even go over here. Um, I, I called it out. Uh, Plain as day, which was um, over here, right? Right, like gold 1950, uh, may draw down a little bit 1925, whatever case it may be. If it comes down 100%, get it back in. I do expect a little bit of draw down, whatever, 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 right? Called it out, right? This was Monday though, right? Now, Wednesday morning, which is today's Wednesday night, but Wednesday morning is when it moved. I went to sleep and draw down. I think I went to sleep, price was at 1931. I got in 1933 for a buy. So I was 20 pips and draw down on two different trades, right? The 13 lot and the six lot. And I woke up and my phone was bugging with all the notifications from the lab, but not only the lab, Sear had texted me like twice in my notifications for Slack. Like for, for, for my lab, like the notifications, like it'll be like hidden, right? It'll say 99 plus notifications, but it won't show me what until I click it. For my Slack, which is where my business is ran through, It'll show me the message. And all I saw when I woke up, opened my eyes, half tired, literally just took my phone real quick. All I saw was Sears saying, yo, everybody's excited. And they, they said they're paying their bills with your gold signal. Gold then flew off the, off the handle and then shot all the way up. I'm like, oh, I didn't know. I'm, I'm literally half asleep opening my chart. Gold is at 1945, 120 plus puts from profit. I'm at that point up $18,000, right? Off gold alone and then the extra five or six to to uh, GU at the time and it kept going up and up and up. I'm just like, oh, this is a good, great start to my day. So that is the reason why I kind of, you know, enter, you know, during, you know, the low volume times of, of 6.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m., that agent session time, um, because it's like, uh, subconsciously it'll help with my psyche, you know what I mean? So keep that in your mind for a strategy, because that does help a lot. Like, believe it or not, I can go over, and I'm gonna go over a lot of things in this video. That is one of the most important things I'm gonna go over in this video is getting in way before price actually moves. And that is, I'm actually gonna go deeper into that before I continue on. That is one thing people don't really realize. A lot of you guys will enter when you see the market moving, right? You'll enter a few confluences too late when the market is moving, you enter, right? So prime example, when gold was flying all the way up at 1946, 1947, take profit was 1950. I actually got a bunch of comments in the lab of people saying, hey, is it too late to enter gold? You're damn right it is. We're already 130, 40 pips into profit. And that's my point. You guys wait till it flies off. In my opinion, if, especially for swing traders, if you're a scalper, don't listen to this, but, but for swing traders and even day traders, it is better to get in. If you are confident the market is going to go in a direction and it's close to it, but it may have a drawdown, right? Like if you think the market is going to go down right here, and this is actually what I did for GU, actually to be uh, kind of ironic, right? If you think the market is going to go down like, once it gets to this trend line or way up or over here, right here, right? It's okay to sell right here before it even goes up, right? Even right here with your stop loss up here and take profit way down here for TP2, right? We can look at it right now. It's, it's a one to two something, right? Let me get this right here. Short position, boom. Stop loss, let's say here. TP down here, right? And it's getting there, right? That's a one to four. One to 4.2 risk reward ratio, right? And you had a little bit of drawdown, right? Many people will wait, right? Wait for price to come all the way up here to this trend line and then have a sell limit up here or wait, fall asleep and think, all right, once it gets here, I'm gonna click sell market execution. And it never gets there. It never gets there. That is why I like to get in for a sell because I know there's not much it can go, right? Like I expect drawdown. So a lot of my trades, I will tell on the lab, like, hey, I expect a little bit of drawdown. So if I'm getting in for a sell right here, right? And it goes right here. I'm cool and comfortable with that because it can still get to this line and come down here. Profit. People may ask, why do I do that? Because I don't want to miss the trade. And a lot of times you guys would be profitable if you just didn't miss the trade. You guys got the, the right bias, the, the right time frame, the right everything, but you just miss the trade. You get in late, to, uh, some confluence is too late, you miss the trade, period. Now, I'm not missing a trade. Sometimes I'll lose. Of course I lose. All traders still lose. All investors still lose, right? But I'd rather lose because I was wrong, right? You'll never see me lose because my stop loss was too tight, right? Like, it's not like my, if we take this off and go back to uh, the cursor, right? It's not like my stop loss was right here and then price will come up, stop me out, and then come down. No, 
my stop loss is always in accordance with structure. This is the last lower high right here. That's my stop loss is 10, 20 pips above that. Great. This is 1 to 3.7. So obviously the ac accurate one was 1 to 4.2, wherever it's at, right? I'm not missing the trade. So keep that as point number three, right? Like point number three is I don't miss the trade, so I'll get in early. Point number two was I placed my trade 6 to 7.30 or to 9.30 p.m. But point number three is I will get in earlier even because I'm so confident it's going to go down with gold. I'm so confident it's going to go up. I will enter right here with a little bit of drawdown down here because my, my stop loss is down here, right? So for the long position, how it was, was I entered at 19.33. This is where I entered. Stop loss was right here, 19.25. Take profit was right here, right? 1 to 2.3 risk to reward ratio. I even talked about it here um, where I had mentioned um, it's a 1 to 2.5-ish risk to reward ratio, but I'm cool with that, especially before FOMC, right? Um, but back to this, right? Point number four. If I even get into any technicals, point number four. Take profit if you're, if the market is two, three, four pips or 40 pips. Because obviously this is gold, so it's different. But it could be two, three pips on another pair like GP, AUD, right? Take profit if it's close to it, right? So prime example, the market is at 1947. If my, my take profit at 1950, why am I waiting? I've seen so many times sitting in my last video where people were like, all right, I'm three pips away, two pips away, one pip away, or for gold, 10 pips away, 20 pips away, because the calculation of gold is different. For my, my, my take profit, I'm going to let it play out. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to go to sleep. I'm going to go be with my, my girl or my, or my man and, and come back and check it later. And then you come back, and then this happens. It takes all the way back down. Then you made no profit. Now you're actually losing because the entry was at 1933. Now you're actually negative. Take profit. The market gave you 140 plus pips. Pips, excuse me. Take the profit. That is point number four, right? Now, getting into the actual technicals of the strategy, right? I can actually delete this, right? And I can actually go back to what the psychological levels were for GBP USD, right? So we're looking at it, and I am so mad because GA, GU is really tanking right now. Like, I really could be trading right now. I'm really upset. Um, that, that, that's frustrating, guys. Um, all right, so we're looking at this, right? So my, uh, let me go to a daily time frame, actually. Um, and these are yellow right now. Sorry, my uh, things are messing up. We're good. 125 is a psych level. 122.5 is a mid level because the psych level is right is obviously 120 round number 125. 120, 125, 130, 135, 140. These are whole round number psychological levels where price actually hesitates at stops at. You can see it. Hesitate, hesitate, hesitate. Came through, retested, came through, broke all the way back below. Came through, hesitated, retested, broke all the way above. Right, 125. Right. 122.5 is that mid-level, right? So you can see, if I can drag this even all, all the way over here, 125, stopped here. And before you guys realize this for newbies, understand that it's not just a simple area. I mean, a simple uh, number, right? So one price stopping at 125 and price stopping at 125, uh, 1.25047, that's the same thing as stopping at 125. That's why we, we as traders, we delete this Fibonacci real quick, as traders put a level here. Because anywhere within this level is classified as 125. Anywhere within this level, same, same as that. So if I were to actually place a level here, I don't have a level here because um, it's, it'll be too many in terms of design and visuals. I like to keep my charts kind of clean. But if I had a level here, right, you'll see price hesitated, stopped here, stopped here, stopped here, broke through, retested, stopped here, right? So that is a level. But I like to keep the differences between my whole levels in terms of 120 and 125 and my little mid levels at 1.22, something along those lines, right? Um, so I have my, so obviously that's my TP2, right? I do believe GU will come all the way down here. Even if it comes down to right here, which is 123 flat, I'm cool with that. Understand the difference between that as well, right? So this may sound a bit confusing, but it's really not, right? So let me go to a blank GPUSD chart. Let's go to a uh, regular uh, OANDA, right? Let's, this is an old chart, clearly. Um, but you can still see it, right? 115, 120, 125. I haven't been on a in a long time. Let me actually remove the drawings. Um, I actually remove the indicators too. Keep it all clean, right? Just purely candlesticks, right? You can look at this, right? As a downtrend, right? High, low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, right? We may have a lower high soon. But I'm looking at it from a perspective of 125, 124, 123, 122, 121. They're all levels. But... The major levels is 120, 125, 130, right? So if price gets to 124, am I going to overlook that? No. So back to this GU chart where 
TP2 is at 122.5. Do I know 1.2300 flat is a, a psych level? It's just not as major? Yes. Am I going to be aware of that? Yes. Am I potentially going to manually, you know, take profit? Like if I was in this trade right now at 123? Yes. So that is a, 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 a basis call. It's a, it's a call for you on what you uh, decipher during that time. Um, but for me, the buffer is 1.22500, but I will, I can manually take profit, you know, 50 pips above at 123 flat. Um, keep your site levels on, right? So have your site level because you need, you need reasons to get in the trade, right? I trade purely price action. You need reasons to get in the trade. So I can say price broke a psychological level. Price placed, you know, a wick right on this psychological level. Understand the candlesticks. That's point number six. Understand the candlesticks. Point number five with the psych levels, uh, again, kind of getting into it, which is kind of, you know, the same as point number one a little bit. But understand the candlesticks. And, and people overlook this, right? When you look at the candlestick Bible or baby pips or my course within the lab, you will see the can even my video here, right? Like, you can go here. You can type candlestick i have a video complete candlestick trading guide right and all and these are, are two both fire videos the importance of closing candlesticks and forex very very important to understand how they close is very important right but also the type of patterns you see are very very important what candlestick did they print on that level once you understand that the whole world changes then you factor in, you know, moving averages. So I got my eight and my 14 crossover to EMAs. These are the only indicators I use. I don't use RSI. I used to. I don't use, you know, max. I don't use uh, stochastics. I don't use none of that. I used to use those in the past, you know, eight years ago, seven years ago when I first started trading, but I don't anymore, right? So you, you wrap all of those up and you get an actual strategy to trade with. And I didn't even include this article right here. I, I talked about this in my last video, but... What you guys gotta understand is you guys need to understand the sentiment of, of, of pairs before you actually get in. So if I look over here, there's a little lightning bolt on TradingView right here, right? If I click this, it shows me some news that's relating to either the pound or the US dollar, right? So you click, even click more news, it comes up on the side. You can click this and it'll either come up just like this from this, right? Or I can click X and it'll link me to daily FX, right? Boom read it it's literally actual professional market analysts telling you what they think is going to happen to gbp usd they're telling you everything right uk cpi the cpi for for the uk i think at two o'clock a.m this morning i believe i remember somebody on twitter had wrote to me and said yo i miss cpi and i was like what cpi you talking about the uk he's like yeah i was like okay i knew that was up but it didn't do nothing too too crazy right but you need to keep this in your mind People look at forexfactory.com, and Forex Factory is a, is a site that has all the news announcements and obviously all the red folders mean something that can really impact the markets. But you don't read within those red news, right? And this is what it does here. So over here, me knowing the Federal Reserve was likely to pause rates, you know, interest rates in terms of like spiking rate, right? In terms of heights, and hikes, excuse me. Obviously, inflation is still occurring. Them deciding an analysis or analysts predicting that it'll pause gave me all the confidence in the world to continue to buy gold because that let me know that there's a chance that the dollar may get a little bit weaker and anytime the dollar is weak gold is essentially very very strong it's a safe haven for investors when the dollar is weak and as you can see you go over to the dollar which is the dxy and i can come over to a four hour two hour time frame this drop was all i needed for my gold trade right it's all i needed because when this drop Gold came all the way back up, right? That's UJ, sorry. <laughs> Gold came all the way back up. And then guess what? When uh, the DXY came all the way back up, guess what gold did? Like clockwork came all the way back down. I use those as a confluence, right? And this is where it comes into the strategy as well, which is point number seven as well, right? Like look at all the fundamentals and see the sentiments. People may say, how do I read the fundamentals? You just read it like you're reading a book because they don't talk in in big language they'll flat out say you know oh the federal reserve decided to like i said pause interest rates and yada 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 they don't want to do this and they'll flat out say because of that we are expecting you know usd jpy to drop a little bit and retest that 1.46 or 146.700 level that it was at two weeks ago like it'll flat out say that this is their prediction it's not gospel but you need to take their sentiment 
overall with what you're doing and that's what I do and that's what I did right read this article but everything is said about it and made my uh, decision in terms of all right gold is gonna be bullish on top of seeing what it did beforehand it was already moving you guys gotta understand a lot of the news already factored in the charts and I saw gold was already moving and the fact that it was already moving and got to this 1928 level all I had to wait for was a retest and, and it continued all the way back up so when you're looking at this video, this is how I decided to get in my trades. People may say, like, how do you actually execute? The whole point of executing is really looking at it in the sense of, all right, I see a pair. Let, let me let me go over here. People may ask, okay, GU is dropping. What would make you execute on GU? And this is why I didn't plan this out and do nothing right, right? What would make me execute on GPUSD right now if I wasn't making a video and I wanted to enter, right? Well, first of all, I'm actually glad because I would need some type of reach, uh, retrace, right? If I were to enter, where would my stop loss be? My stop loss would have to be up here. This is the last, uh, you know, high, lower high, right? So I would need for GU, if I can get the brush tool again, to come up. And there's a level. Let me get this ray again. There's a level right here, right, at 123,700 that I would hope that GU could get to. And if it can get to that, this would be my, my little mini level. And, again, going into, you know, points right here, right? You may see this level, like... I'm going to get back to my point in a second, right? The little boxes that I have on these, you know, daily time frames. Over here, give me a second, guys. Sorry. These levels that I have help me analyze what's going on, right? So this is not a quote-unquote, like, major area at 1.185 because that's not the mid-level. Mid-level is 1.175, but price stopped here. So if I see prices stopping at an error and, and reacting to it, I'm going to, you know, have something to reflect that, right? Same with over here, parallel channel, descending channel, heading down, right? Over here, price was consolidating, right? So I'm going to mark that, right? Even over here for, let's say, gold, for example. This is a people may say, oh, this is confusing. It's not. It's art to me, right? You're looking at, I have my levels, my 1850 level, my 1900 level, 1950 level, my 2000 level. But within that, right, I see price stopped here at 1925. So this is still a level. It's, it's reacting to it, right? I have a little ray there. I don't want to put, put another blue area there because it may confuse me with my major levels, right? It reacted there. Over here, it's still reacting over there. I got this long-term, you know, trend line, downtrend down here, right? So it helps me understand that overall, it may be a downtrend until it breaks above. Price is breaking above, right? Help me give, give me all the more confluences to understand that price may retest and then head back up, which is what it did, which is how I made my money earlier on gold, you know, earlier today, right? Also had this trend line right here that started August 21st. If I can just go to the four-hour time frame, I'm going to get back to GU in a second, right? I'm trying to give you guys an example, right? If I bar replay this and look at this, right? This was an area I had before it broke through as a trend line, right? So I had this here. People may ask, oh, why did I keep it there? Because when you look at it when, with, with price overall, Price came back up and retested this exact level and came back down to consolidate it before it broke broke through. So maybe I can delete it now. Maybe a good time to delete it now. Is it a good time to delete this? No, it hasn't broken, right? Trend, right? A, B, price could come back down and retest this area. Could. Maybe it'll never touch it. Oh, well. But it's our job to keep it there, right? People, and we may ask, why did I have this area right here? Price stopped here. Price stopped over here. So make your marking, another point, make your markings where price stops at. You don't have a bunch of markings everywhere, but make it where it makes sense to you. So GU, right, even though I have all my psych levels, I'm, like I said, I'm bringing it back to the main point. Even though I have my levels, I'm still going to place a little bit of a, a horizontal right here because price clearly reacted off of that. I can even get a little smaller of an actual area here, right? and just have it reacting to it. Let me actually place a little bit below it as well, right? Have it react. So if price were to come anywhere near this level, I may get a sell limit. Why? Bunch of reasons. Price retested, created another lower high. I can get an, a little mini trend line right here, A, B, C, which will allow us price to come down here. I can even get a Fibonacci. Let me actually do this, sorry. Boom. I can even get a Fibonacci, A, B, C, D falls at 122.5 around here. Well, D, the extension would be 20, anywhere between this area, 27 and 61. But this is why I mentioned earlier, right? Go back to the daily time frame, right? TP2 is 122.5. It kind of lines up with this 0.6 or 61 uh, extension, right? But I also said if price gets to 123 flat, I would take profit. Where does that line up? The 27 extension. So people may say, oh, TP2 is 1.22, you know, 500. 
but it didn't get there. It got to 1.23 in reverse. You guys got to see the bigger picture behind it. There's, there's a potential Fibonacci area that lines up perfectly. Look at this. I didn't draw this number. The 27 extension lines up with 1.23000 on the dot to a T. So, yeah, my, my, my magically, literally, right in front of everybody. Don't tell the lab this. But luckily, it's not there right now. So, I'm, I'm after this call or this video, I'm going to jump on a call with my lab at 8.15. I'm going to place a sell limit at 123.600. And this is GU. I'm going to do a live right here for you guys to see. Because I do believe if it gets here, I would I'd be comfortable with, with the sell, right? Um, now, however, this is not a signal, right? This is me. I, I would have to deeply analyze this with the lab and do it, but I may as well say I may get it. Depends, all right? So take this with a grain of salt. If the market just shoots up, I'm comfortable with that, right? I'm comfortable with a sell limit here. But if the market does this, and I'm telling you guys right now, if the market does this, it comes up and then it comes down right here and places a, a higher low and starts to come back up and break through this, get out, get out. Because this is structure being broken right here. It gave us a higher low, right? But you would still be in profit because this is where you'd enter. Most people would see that higher low being created and then still watch, wait, be like, oh, is it gonna get to 1.23? No, structure's broken, right? But I'm comfortable with getting in for a sell limit here because chances are it's gonna, most likely it's gonna come back down unless it's some crazy news announcement regarding the pound or the, or the US dollar that I'm not aware of. Um, and if it comes down and it makes a little bit of a, a lower low and then make it a lower high and then come, we're golden, we're golden, we're golden, we're golden. So keep that in mind. But let me just place that sell limit. I'm gonna have a 0.14 lot size on GU at 123. I'm gonna do 650 to give it, cause it's a little bit of an area, right? So I'll do 650. 23650 stop loss will still be stop loss will be here because this would be my entry right stop loss would be above here this would be the last uh higher low i mean sorry excuse me lower high i'll do 1239 to be safe because this technically this if price were to come down right technically this would be the last lower high but let me give it a little bit more breathing room 123 i'll do 850 i'll do 950 I, and I usually don't have 30 pip stop losses. I usually have 40 and 50 and 60 because my take profit is so massive. Um, but take profit here is 122.5. Um, I'm going to place it right now. That's TP2. All right, I placed it. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing on, on, on the lab. This is the first time I'm, I'm, I'm doing this on a YouTube for free. But it's going to be funny because this video is not going to come out for another few days. So it's going to be too late for y'all anyway. Um, and the reality is um, TP1 is 123 flat. So price gets to 123 flat. Like I said in the beginning, take 60 to 70 to 75% of the trade off. I think that was point number one. So point number five was cycle levels. Point number one, I'm getting mixed up, but obviously Connor will edit it and make it point one, point two, point three all outline. Point number one was taking the 60 to 75% off your trade and let the other 25% run. It's risk-free at that point, right? If it stops you out at break even, great. You still maximize you know, a lot of your trade, most of your trade at this level, this TP1 level. So um, that is my strategy in 2023. Um, it, it, it may sound, you know, more in depth. Obviously, like I can go into deeper a little bit in terms of, oh, I use Heikinashi candlesticks because they show me the overall trend all down, all up, all down, all up, all down. We are clearly in a downtrend right now. So that gives me more reason to believe uh, we're heading down because Heikinashi is not going to be green, red, green, red, green, red, like Japanese candlesticks are. Uh, if you don't know Heikinashi's, I, I got to make a whole video on Heikinashi's later, but I talk about Heikinashi a, a lot in the past in my 2020 and 2021 and 2022 strategies. Um, but keep that in your mind, guys. Keep that in your mind because um, this is my strategy and this is what I use. Let me get this freaking cursor off. I can delete all this right now. Um, this is what I use to get in trades. Um, this is and this is how I uh, manage my trades. Well, I can kind of get into that. Maybe I'll do that in another video, how I manage my, my trades. Um, that's a video on its own. It's not a video in this strategy, but I can kind of summarize real, real quick. Um, when I'm in a trade and I see that I'm in profit, 100 pips, 90 pips, 120 pips, chances are structure was created and I'm able to move my stop loss into break even, into profit at that point. So it's a risk free trade. Some people on, on the lab and the comments said, I don't do that because sometimes I move it into, into profit and all of a sudden I get stopped out. I understand that. I get that. 
but you got stopped out in profit. I'd rather get stopped out in profit than be mad that, you know, I didn't have a, 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 a you know, my stop loss moved. So price went all the way in my direction and I accidentally fell asleep. And then all of a sudden price came back down and then it stopped me out when I should have moved my, my stop loss into profit. So I hope this video helped you guys out a lot. I don't even know how long this video is. I don't want to make it too long. Um, this is a simplified but still detailed version of my strategy. Um, people may say, again, like I could say, why what I'm getting now, the stop loss would be too high. I, I have more discipline than that. So um, work on your uh, risk management and psychology. Look at this video over here. Add this video, go back to my videos, to the overall strategy. I'm not going to get into risk management and psychology in this video. I'm just going over the technicals and the fundamental side of things. And this covers the risk management and psychology. You put that video together with this video and you have an overall strategy to uh, work with. And if you find yourself um, relating to 40 to 50% of the things I say, but then the other 50% is another mentor, another trader, or you know your own trial and error, that's perfectly fine. You don't have to take 100% of what I say and what I do. Just understand, if I can help you get to the next level by a few percent, I've done my job. You know what I mean? So hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you want to see me trade live and trade with me and ask me questions directly, go to www.livetradinglive.com. If you want a one-on-one -on -one with me directly, like a one-on-one -on -one private conversation for an hour, go to www.swaggy101.com and um, we're active. I'll answer all your questions. Without further ado, I will see you guys in the next video and I'm about to do this session in the lab, but I'm actually going to trade with them and you guys won't see this until later until it's too late. So. Love you guys. Appreciate you guys. And uh, later. Brrr.